Today we're going to be looking at the price difference between going to a restaurant and cooking at home. The numbers will shock you. Toronto has a culture of going out. It's a way of bonding with friends and that's not necessarily a bad thing. After the pandemic, cost of living has increased. Inflation is a silent tax on everyone. And in order to survive, we need to adjust to our situation. Sometimes that means making sacrifices. And sometimes that means finding alternative solutions. One of the alternatives I've been thinking about a lot is the normalization of eating at home instead of eating at restaurants. Growing up with immigrant parents, we lived very frugal lives and we never really went to restaurants. When we did, it was usually all-you-can-eat buffet or a cheap restaurant. And because we rarely went, it was always a special occasion. Maybe that's why as an adult, I can step back and reconsider restaurant culture. I'm not saying to never go out, but I've always wondered how the costs compare. And when I mentioned that I was craving hot pot, we had the perfect opportunity to find out. So we asked all our friends if they wanted to do hot pot at home this time. So today, we're going to run the numbers and see how they stack up so we can make informed decisions moving forward. Diane and I bought most of the ingredients which totaled to $130.72 and Keith and Alana bought some sliced meat for $54.72 for a grand total of $185.75. Compared to the last time we went for hot pot for our friend's birthday which was $123.85 for Suroi and I. So here's the full breakdown. Hey, what? Shabu shabu. Oh, that's hot pot nine. It's hot pot nine. Mm. Poison? Poison. Yeah, so the dogs are upstairs because they have to wag use it. The car, did Brian ever tell you about the, the bed? You consult the ones that you consult them all. The With the final results the being that a restaurant <laughs> came out to 3.3 <laughs> times more expensive than at home. Plus, we had so much leftovers that everyone got to take something home like a little loot bag for adults. Oh, nice. Oh, no, I'm okay. I don't want to take it. Me? Yeah. 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 If it's working, I'm okay. There was some extra left for the dogs. What extra what? Otoro and Chuturo tuna. And so we just had a quick light boil on it. Just in case, and uh, I guess the dogs will get to enjoy or indulge with us. Saroy was so excited to do a cost comparison that he decided to also run the numbers for their UFC night. Originally, when it was announced that UFC was coming to Toronto for the first time in six years, we decided we would try to buy the tickets and started saving up. Our budget was around $250, maybe worst case $300. However, when the tickets were officially released, we were shocked by the prices. 
over $700 per ticket for the cheapest seats. It was way too much. So they decided to use that money to get some fancy food and pay for pay-per-view. They ended up getting a butcher box of Wagyu steaks from Butcher Boutique, which is a grand total of $195. Compared to a restaurant, which there are a few places that have Wagyu due to needing a license, this is a rough comparison. Compared to buying overpriced tickets, this is where the biggest savings came from, over $6,000 in cost savings. Uh, that? Yeah, I feel like a lot of those bets are actually pretty close. Isn't it seven? Because seven platforms. Oh, Alex. Alex. 